All right, Joe, we're live on video. Stand by for audio. All right, good day and good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to another Live the Fuel show. So today, I am bringing back a repeat co-host. Not just any repeat co-host. This gentleman, you know, I, I, gotta, I gotta say this. He probably is one of my early inspirations because, because he's the first podcast conference that I ever attended. Not just the first podcast conference I ever attended in 2016, but the conference that I basically practically unveiled my show at because I launched in September of 2016, this Live the Fuel podcast show, now over 200 episodes later. So without further ado, the founder of the Mid-Atlantic Podcast Conference, aka Matt Kahn, Super Joe Pardo, welcome back to the show. Woo! Thank you so much, Scott. It feels great to be here. Thank you for fitting me into your schedule, as as well as me being able to fit anything into my <laughs> schedule at this point. Um, I it's it's an honor to to be here, and it's an honor to know that that MapCon was uh, uh, an inspiration uh, for you to get your your off your butt and start start podcasting. Uh, Two hundred episodes later, man, that's that's incredible. Well, I mean, most people don't make it that far, so that's that's awesome. Yeah, as you and I are recording this, there's already actually two hundred and four, right? So we I get two a week, so we're already we're already cruising, man. We're just cruising past it. Like you hit the goal and you just keep going. You just keep. <laughs> so I mean, where where is you, where are you at? Like you you have morphed your show. Let's catch some. <laughs> let's cut the people up here. So, ladies and gentlemen, this guy. He's hustling. He, he's got a lot going on. Um, he's only about an hour and a half from me. He's just outside of Philadelphia in uh, South Jersey. And I've actually had the honor of crashing at your pad and, and eating food and playing with camera gear. Uh, you made food. Don't, don't, don't uh, downplay that. That's important. <laughs> I do love to cook. I do. You love do. And it was very well appreciated because sun that Sunday I was totally wiped after three days of like preparation and then nonstop like go, go, go and, you know, helping people and being, being about it. So yeah, let, let's go with that. I mean, let's pause on a little bit of your story. I mean, I gave people a little bit of a teaser, uh, but I mean, you, you are obviously a longtime podcaster so much that you've gotten so inspired that you launched MapCon, but what you're hinting at, the drain, the exhaustion, is event management. Not just event management, but when you're the founder of the event, I'm guessing what you're hinting at is that event management is taken on in a whole different way. Yeah. So one of the things that we, I need to get better at <laughs> is, is, is delegating things out and going into our fourth year um, I think I've, I've done a little bit more of that this year. And I think, uh, the plan is for the, for, for the fifth anniversary of next year. Uh, I want to, I want to get even further along in that path because, you know, if we're not, if we're not improving ourselves, uh, we're not, you know, it, we're, if we're not, not if we're not growing, we're dying. Right. Yeah. So, so that's why, um, but I, I really love the fact that I get to be so involved in it. Like, I mean, I went to podcast movement and, you know, I, I, I love Jared. I love Dan, but, but like, they're in the background, right? Like they're there, they're, they're networking and stuff like that, but they're not sweating it like I am. Cause they're not oper They have operators that are do they're handling well, they, different they're parts further the down conference. the timeline. Like they've built it up, right? Like, mm -hmm. you've, well, how long have they been around now? Uh, so, uh, this was their fourth year. Really? Wait, so you got, yeah. you guys have the same age of mm -hmm. podcast conferences? Yep. Here's I the, the, the difference long. is they have, they have funding behind them. Ah, <laughs> So like my funding is, is people coming. Right. And, and the fact that I, I, I doesn't really matter to me whether or not I make a buck. Um, okay. Okay. I mean, I, I've made, I've made money year over year, but it's like, it's not nearly as much as it should be. <laughs> well, so what you're hinting at is, and this is good for the ladies and gentlemen, like the entrepreneurial journey, right? Uh, we talk a lot about health, business, and lifestyle. Your, your entrepreneurial lifestyle is just different with this event because you you kind of started more grassroots. Am I wrong with that? No, absolutely. We we did start grassroots. We didn't have a fundraiser. Um, where I mean, podcast movement. I, th their first year, they had th uh, thirty thousand plus dollars that were raised in a GoFundMe or something to that effect. Oh, uh, that is their history. I forgot. Kickstarter. I think it was something like that. Yeah. So they they started with with a base of like selling a buttload of tickets right out of the gate and and getting funding and they have multiple founders as well mm. so so it, it's just a different dynamic of like me doing it myself and starting in like a um a school gymnasium and then bringing it to a hotel and growing it little by little by little um versus like 
let's how, how do we get the biggest of the big uh, players involved? And, and by players, I mean like the biggest companies, you know, that, that are involved in the podcasting space to, to get involved and get the money to, to grow it in, in, in rapid succession. You know, I think it's important. This is good for people because I think, listen, you guys have the same timeline, four years, four years. Mm -hmm. um, and this comes up a lot from the entrepreneurial perspective. This is basically some of your niche. So yeah, ladies and gentlemen, this show is probably going to be more business savvy focused, but it's, it's going to be fun because like, like Super Joe, he's a hardcore Disney nut, uh, amazing family man. And, and you do have an amazing family. And, oh, and, you're, you. and we're going to get into that in this show about you reconnecting, so to speak, with the passion of family and where you came from and how you're kind of coming full circle, but at a whole different perspective. So I'm just going to build that up, but then pull people away for a second. So you can help take us there later. Um, you're you, 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 four years. The difference was you chose a different launch pattern. You went grassroots. Let's go community. Let's grow slow. Let's grow controlled. And admittedly, I came in after the, the high school transition. I remember I think, it, were you doing Instagram ads in 2016 for that event? Uh, I did. I did. There we go. So that's just what, Facebook and Instagram ads. Yeah. See? So I was, uh, I was in that. Okay. So we'll get into some of the hacks here, ladies and gentlemen. And Joe knows this more than I do. And he, he's helped a lot of people with this is that when you start having an idea, you, you start realizing I need to surround myself with people who also share that idea, that mission, that drive, et cetera. So I start hacking all the podcast stuff. I'm studying it. I'm like, you know what? I'm going to finally get a voice out there. I'm gonna, I want to help people. I want to get back. I want to get my platform going, yada, yada, yada. I'm studying all the greats, you know? And, and then I'm like, okay, put up or shut up. Let's buy the gear. So then I buy the gear. Then I start recording episodes. I got like three to four in the tank. And then I see your ad. And I was like, oh, dude, that would be perfect. You know, I want to launch in September, which is my birthday month. And there's, there's, a, there's a podcast conference. I'm like, what better way to time it? And then, yeah, part of me was like, hey, I can come down there. I'm a huge networking nut. I can come down to a conference. Here's a little hack, ladies and gentlemen. Go to conferences and events and you can network and you can grow and you can connect with people. And then also the biggest piece of it is like, I can see what other people are doing because I'm literally brand new, self-taught, other than what I've studied online, never attended, attended anything podcast related. So you were my uh, pop of the cherry, so to speak. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, isn't that what you find? Is, is that part, it, that's not the core purpose of MapCon. And again, ladies and gentlemen, it's MAP hyphen con, map dash con. Uh, for the video watchers, I'm going to go ahead and do some screen sharing and show that off. But so on that, like, is that part of your core audience uh, to inspire the newbies like I was? Or is it bigger than that? It's so it's it's about like a 60 40 split. So we get about 60 percent uh, current podcasters, 40 percent newbies. And um, and, and it's, what's really great, though, is the uh, because we're a smaller conference, right? We're, we're this year we're going to hit just uh, probably about 120 to 125 attendees. So we've you know, yeah, growing what's the year average year. podcast movement. Uh, this year they had, if you include their vendors and um, speakers, it was like 2,500 people. Right. What I was told. But again, as yeah. you hinted earlier, they did crowdfunding. They did a crazy massive like pre-qualifier pre before they even launched their first event. Whole different way of launch. So. Yeah. And, and, you know, they have, I, I'm not sure what their official like ratio of is, but I, 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 I was in the room and somebody, I forget who it was, asked the, like the big, like the big ballroom hey how many of you haven't launched the podcast yet and like a lot of hands went up like right. a lot a lot of hands like probably i i mean I, this is just a guesstimate this is just like one of the you know ballroom uh pieces it, it was probably close to half the room maybe maybe more i you know this is just me like looking around the seat so i it, it's I hope that those people uh, make the networking connections to to get inspired and motivated to get their show launched from that conference, right? And and that's one of the things that we're really uh, I really pride myself on is when people come to MapCon, they they become of. And I heard about this at, at Podcast Movement because I hadn't been the Podcast Movement in three. This was uh, in in the last two years, so 
I, and I heard this from a number of people about their MapCon family um, when I wasn't even around. Like they just, they, they, this is what people heard and brought it back to me that, you know, people um, that are connecting there, they're, they're together for about two days and they're, they're rubbing elbows with people like Dave Jackson and Jessica Kupferman and Mark Asquith. Like those are the, you know, people that like, people are like, whoa, like look at what they're doing. And, and, and when, especially when you're just getting started, it's, it's awesome to have this uh, low stress, low. Um, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, I'll just say, that, just it's like an easier approach. It's yeah, it's, cal- it, it's calmer. It's more personable. More personal. It's not just like rushing around to get to the different rooms. We have one room, yeah. um, and and we want to fill that room up with as many people as possible. We want to create jokes throughout the day. You know, you, you get those inside jokes. You you get to interact and have these. Um, have a platform where like, you know, we try to make it so that people can stand up and tell who they are, what their podcast is about and, and all that. And, and so that way people get to hear other people and we have workshop, you know, we have the, the podcast competition workshop where you have to network with other podcasters to like create a podcast in 20 minutes or less and yeah, you that- can, <laughs> you know, win, win great prizes for it. And, re- and, re- and even the lunch, right? You have to like, we have lunch. So everybody there is getting lunch and the idea is that we're all together and you get to get out of your comfort zone and, and go meet some other people in a, in a, in a, you know, in a welcoming environment. Yeah. One thing that I enjoyed about it was as the newbie on the street, I had already been to other conferences, not, not podcast related. So I've already got like some experience, right? Getting yourself out there into the general public connecting and network. I have no problem doing it. And so coming to your conference wasn't, that overwhelming for me. And admittedly, as you hinted earlier, I think it's important to focus on that is that your podcast is, or your your podcast conference is the local consistent podcast conference. It's why you called it MapCon for the Mid-Atlantic Podcast Conference. See, podcast movement, nothing against them, they float, they rotate, they switch to different areas of the country. So you have chosen saying, listen, this is my home turf, I live here, I'm going to create that anchored annual event. Like this is mid Atlantic podcast conference. And admittedly your website even shows, I'll go ahead and screen share again, that you you're targeting literally the mid Atlantic, which is, you know, Maryland, Pennsylvania, New Jersey. Uh, you got New York on here. Uh, and actually you, you did it. You shoot up to Connecticut. Mm-hmm. But uh, how about our, how about our fish nerds, buddy? He, that guy rolled yep. down from New Hampshire. <laughs> uh, we have people that come from Florida, LA, South Dakota, Washington State. Rob the Greenlee. blind blogger, isn't uh, he, he? He is from Texas. Yeah, uh, Joel Bogus from Texas. We, you know, just be. It, it's really called the Midland Podcast Conference because of that's where I live and that's where it's being held, not because yeah. that's who's really invited. No. Um, but that's where. But the but the the root started in that, right? Like that's where. It, it it came out of was like, hey, I want to create this thing that's bigger than just you know Philadelphia and and get people to come to it. And even in the first year, we had people come all up and down the East Coast, Florida, Atlanta, um, Connecticut, New Hampshire. Like we, they people came from all up and down the East Coast the first year. And the well, second a, year, it came from all over the place. But that's one advantage of the East Coast. After somebody like me, like who's lived around the country a bit. The East Coast has the, the strongest density of population, right? Let's be real. I mean, mm-hmm. our country was founded, the colonial states here in the Northeast. So the infrastructure is more established. There's more airports. There's more options. Like I could buy a flight to Florida for like 80 bucks. I mean, it's so price point, And this is for people listening to this. And maybe you're not a podcaster, but maybe you really love this podcast or you're a fellow listener of Joe's podcast. And it's like, oh, wait a minute. I want to go hang with those guys then come to an event and hang with us. You know I mean? It's like, it's not that hard, even mm-hmm. though we've got people come from Texas and all over, but it's like the flights aren't that expensive to come into Philadelphia from the Carolinas or the, they're very cheap everywhere. Like depending right, right now flights are just ridiculously cheap. I mean, yeah. you fly to LA from, from Philly for 149 bucks each way. What? Yeah. Yeah. Ooh, I got yeah. a client I got a client I need to go visit. I may need to get out to California. Uh that was Alaska Air Airlines. You know, uh but but look just look around, man. Like there's cheap flights. Right now I don't know what's going on with the with the airline industry, but there's cheap flights every which way. Maybe they're desperate right now. 
Or they're just trying to get people hooked on the airlines again. I don't know. Maybe. I mean, when people are getting sucked out windows, that's... <laughs> it's, well, <not laughs> it, it, it tends to be hard. Yeah, yeah. it's hard to get, get people on them things. It's not the best marketing game plan. Let's be real. <laughs> um, I would have chosen a different path, different route. Yeah. A little over the top. A little over the top. Yeah. Um, it was a bit sad. extreme um, so, and, sad, luckily, and very sad. We don't, luckily, luckily at MapCon, I mean, you guys don't do anything crazy like that. You're not trying to hurt anybody. Um, <laughs> uh, if anything, we're trying to help people grow. And, and I think you know, this is a good thing to pause on is that when you create an event and, and you're, you're a multi-author, so you could speak this with your books and your podcast, is that there should be a higher purpose behind what you're doing. Am I wrong on that? Um, when you say higher purpose, so for me, it's everything I do is generally connected to each other yeah. and, and other people don't get that right out of the gate. When I left my family's business, like I was like, okay. And it was like two months in, um, I started off this podcast one month after leaving. Um, and I was like, you know, I see the dots, right? Like consulting and writing books and podcasting and, uh, you know, making videos and do it, doing all these different things or they're all connected. Right. Um, but a lot of people are like, that sounds like a lot. And that sounds like it's very scattered. And I'm like, no, 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 but it, it's all the dots are there. I connected them all. You just don't understand how this all works and that, and that's okay. But like, I'm not going to let your way of thinking hold me back in that sense. Well, um, let's be real. Not everybody has as many platforms or exposure points that you've created. Uh, <laughs> but I think it's important that you've helped, emphasize what you, your, your whole purpose is, is that yes, you want these platforms to feed back and forth because not everybody is a podcast listener. Not everybody wants to read a physical book. Some people are drawn to audio content. Some people are drawn to written or typed content. Some people are drawn to video content. So what you're doing is genius. That's what you're supposed to be doing. It's like you're trying to meet people where they're at and you're adapting to how your audiences consume content differently. Am I wrong on that? No, I, I, you know, look, is it, per, is it perfect? Is it, <laughs> it, does it work every, the way that, you know, it's intended to every time? No, but I will say this, uh, you know, writing content has been, it's a struggle for me because I'm very slow at writing. Like I write books, but I write books for people who don't like to read. It. Yeah. So like, I, I like to write, but, but the, the editing part and the like going back and rereading and all that stuff, that process is just very slow for me because I'm a very slow reader. So, so for me, um, I like to create video and I love to create podcast, like podcast audio content. So, so when yeah, I, you're still you doing know, the talk, right? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, we're, we're going to get, well, we could talk okay. about that if you want. Right. Pause on that. That's okay. It's yeah, okay. we can, Keep we can talk about that. It's yeah. well, there's so, so, I would love to be able to share every, every aspect of like what, what I, what I'm going through with the, uh, with going back to work in my family's business. That's what you're referring to, right? Well, your vlog was before that. I yes. Mean, it uh, was. Yeah, and the business the, lessons. The point of a vlog is that when you create a vlog, you're telling your day-to-day -day story maybe, or at least yours was, um, mm -hmm. Because, I mean, I remember being on your vlog, actually. So yeah. um, I was like, oh, yeah, sure, I'll be on your vlog. <laughs> but that's, that's the, it, it's, I, I think it's important, though, like you, you're, you're hinting or hesitating that, well, yeah, I kind of paused it, which that's fine. Because if it's not speaking to you and it's not coming across the way you want it to come across and you need to retool or reinvent because there's other things going on, then do that. Like, don't, don't put the wrong stuff out there. And so is that what you did? You kind of paused the vlog for now? Yeah, I, I was hoping to actually do more of it as, as going back into my family's business, which we alluded to earlier. Mm -hmm. um, but the, the thing about it is, is I, what I don't want to happen is I don't want it to become a reality show of, mm -hmm. of the business. So, so like we, we, were, we also alluded earlier that I've changed my show over the course of the last, you know, four and a half years of doing this. And uh, so now it's, it's called the business podcast, 18 months to, to franchise. And that part of it is, is my intention to come back to my family's business and to build a franchise, you know, worthy business out of it. Um, does that necessarily mean like, I'll, I'll accomplish it. Does that necessarily mean that, um, it, you know, it already happened and I'm just releasing content after the fact to be like, Oh, look, the journey already happened. And here's all the story. Um, no, it, it, what it means is, is that, um, this is my intention 
of building out a business that's franchise worthy in 18 months and so that we can grow it. But what I, the original intention was like, Hey, I'm going to vlog this and da, 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 but I don't want it to become a reality show. Okay. I'm feeling right? about that. Yeah. So, and, and that's There's why, of that. <laughs> there, yeah. Fair. And, and, and that's the thing, like, I, you know, I'm there to do a specific task of, of optimizing the processes and, and really helping the business, you know, uh, grow in, in that domain, right? Not necessarily going out and getting sales, but the, we, we have the sales coming in, but like we're wasting a lot of time in the stuff in between. You're, you're speaking about your family's company now. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So let's, let's real quick pause for late for just okay. a little bit of the backstory. So ladies and gentlemen, like he, he used to work with his family's company. Then he split off as he kind of talked a little bit about, right? Then yep. you, know, you launch a podcast, you start writing books, you're, you launch a podcast conference. And then uh, up until actually very recently when I met you in Philly, like you kind of gave me the hush hush update, like, Hey man, lots happening. Like we're riding in my car from, from uh, your meetup. Wait, yeah, it was your meetup. It wasn't meetup. my meetup. No, it was Lori's oh. meetup. It was, it was the Ma MapCon slash uh, Harry Duran's podcast junkies style Harry Duran yeah. Yeah. Uh, meetup. Harry's the man. Harry's the man. Yeah, um, yeah. So anyway, so Lori arranged it, but it was really a MapCon themed, like, hey, MapCon family, come meet up. And I was coming back from business in Southern New Jersey. So I was like, hey, I'm going to swing by and see who, who's hanging, right? Because it was your, it was her mutual meetup. Yep. And then it was the after party meetup, so to speak, at that like trendy bar uh, bowling alley place, yeah. uh, which was for the podcast websites, people with Mark, Mark Asquith and everybody else. So And A-Weber. And A-Weber, yeah. So I Shout went out there. Tom Tate. Yeah, Tom is the man. I love Tom. He is. Yeah, so we, so, so that's why I was like, we were actually talking, it was funny, real quick, ladies and gentlemen, like just going to pause on this. Like we're trying to figure out how to get over there. I thought it was a different bowling alley, like literally where I met you the very first time years ago at the yeah. podcast movement meetup at mm -hmm. a different bowling alley in a different part of Philadelphia. And you're like, no dude, it's, it's downtown. Like, okay. So I was like, screw it. Let's just hop in the car. So, cause my car is right underneath in the parking garage underneath where we were hanging out. So we start shooting over there. Traffic obviously is awful. It's Philadelphia. And then I had to share this real quick because we're like, we're sitting in a, in a side street, choked up by traffic, trying to get through the red lights. And I'm about, I'm like a block around the corner from where I think we're going. I'm trying to track the GPS. And ladies and gentlemen, if you ever like stop or pause in downtown Philadelphia, choked between the buildings, your GPS is not always the most accurate. Um, and then all of a sudden, Joe just drops the window. And I'm like, what are you doing? It starts yelling into the street. And I'm like, what's going on? Like, who was that, by the way? I'm, I'm blanking on his name. <laughs> That's Brent Basham of uh, Digital Dads. So this dude, this, this other podcaster <laughs> is just randomly on the sidewalk. And Joe's like, yo, get in the car. And I was like, yeah, I don't know who you are. But yeah, get in the car. <laughs> It's like we pre qualify. <laughs> he's pre he's he's qualified. <laughs> so all of a sudden, like just oh, he realizes it's you, and then like oh, okay, and he's like yeah, I think I'm like yeah, we're we're going to the same place. Just get in. So he jumps in the back seat, and I'm just like oh, this, only in Philly with Joe. Only that's the only thing that was going through my mind. I'm like Joe bringing some fun. <laughs> He was lost. He was, he was, he was, I mean, we were like probably, I think it was, I think it was like closer to two blocks away, Maybe, but yeah. like you had to like go out and then come back around. And, and yeah, the best like part was he was standing facing our car, which was actually his back was to the event, two yes. blocks to a direction. So I think you didn't nail it. Cause like he was literally, his body was facing the wrong way, looking at his smartphone, trying to figure out where to go. So you definitely helped him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it would have probably taken a while. I wouldn't. I mean, walking around Philly is is can be tough if you if you don't really really know. Is he um, from Philly or no? No, he's from Atlanta. Oh, he man. came to he came to the first ever podcast, uh, Mid Atlantic. See, he came uh, all the way up from Atlanta. He flew up, and we had other people uh, that drove up from Atlanta to be there. Okay. So yeah. anyway, so I just had to have that segue because it was just a great story to pop back in my head just now. And I'm like, that was hilarious. Uh, and then- I was hoping you were going there. <laughs> yeah. And I was like, okay, uh, let's go. And then we get there. And then I'm like, I'm realizing that the parking garage is like, there's all kinds of weird construction going on. And one of the parking garages was cut off. And I'm like, screw it, guys, just get out. I'll deal with this parking crap and I'll figure it out. So I think I finally caught up to you guys like 
maybe 10, 15 minutes later because I circled the blocks like three more freaking times before I could find a, a, a garage that I could actually access that was not blocked by like construction roadblocks. It was total adventure. Yeah, it was a lot of flooding there just like a couple of weeks earlier. Oh, so they were doing repair work because of that. Yeah, like it, it was like really bad flooding, like really, really bad flooding there. Um, I didn't realize that was the area. Like I see it on the news, but I didn't realize that was the area yeah. that uh, that was the case. So all of that aside, fun segue. Back to the point was uh, you're catching me up in the car about, hey, man, like this, you know, I've been working with this not-for-profit. Um, and who can we shout out to them? What's the name of them again? Uh, HopeWorks, Camden. HopeWorks, great yeah. organization. You they talked really are. about them on one of our past episodes. And uh, it might have been, God, it might have been back. No, it was after episode 73. Episode 73, we were, to, uh, we were actually promoting. Oh, yeah, no, we did talk about HopeWorks. Episode 73, ladies and gentlemen, if you want to learn more about HopeWorks and where Joe came from before, we were talking about MapCon. Hope works, and I think we even talked a little bit about DreamCon. Yeah, DreamCon. So it was a whole compilation in that episode. That's way back now. Wow, seventy three. Time flies. Um, but that was a good show. So, but Joe, you've moved on. I mean, a great not for profit. Time to make a change. Your pops reaches out to you, and he's like, "Hey, um, clearly you know a few things." Actually, I don't know if he said that or not, but. <laughs> <laughs> Since I have an interesting relationship with my father, I find that as we get older, only once in a while, he'll say, hey, so what do you think about this? Like All of a sudden, he asks my opinion on things. I'm like, whoa, I'm definitely getting older. <laughs> so, I mean, I'm not sure how your conversation went with your pops, but... Um, yeah, I mean, it, 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 it was something along the lines of like, you know, I, I'm getting older and I want to expand and... Um, I, you know, I'm, I'm tired, but I don't, you know, I, I, the way that, the way that the place is operated now, it would, it would, it would go from like working 40 some hour, you know, 42, 43 hours a week to like 80 hours a week. And he's like, wow. I, you know, I've been doing this since I was a kid. So I'm ready to, I'm, I want it to be bigger, but I don't want to necessarily do it all myself. So, well, cause if, there's no transition plan there. There's no system. There's no team. Like, no, 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 there is. Um, no, no, they, they already have like 14 employees. Like they, 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 the, the business has been around like the, the actual shop itself, not under the, uh, so, you know, yeah. certain upper, um, so, ownership, but, but it's been around since like the sixties. So, okay. So interesting. Cause like we talked about in the car and I was trying to feel that out. I don't know if it's something we could talk about in the show today or not, but mm -hmm. so you talk to a lot of business coaches, um, and a lot of people will say there's two ways to build a company, right? Like you, you build it for longevity to pass it down through generations, yada, 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 or you're building a company to eventually be sold. But in order for a company to be sold, you have to have the people, the team, the systems in place. So the future buyer or investment company sees like, okay, this is everything that I'm getting. But if you have a company that's just run by one person, for example, it's kind of hard, like, well, if that one person is the talent, is the system, whatever. So I'm not sure if you agree with those two different ways of growing a company or not, but like, is that a part of that longevity process that you your dad wants to grow this because uh, you, with your help to eventually be sold or like, uh, I, don't I don't, I don't think so. I, okay. you know, I, I think he's, he's learned a few things since, since we had the other, you know, the parts business. Right. Um, and when he sold that, like, he realized like he, he realized that like things aren't necessarily um, built to last forever or to, to necessarily have to be because because part of the problem when 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 companies get bigger right like when we have um, part of the truck service parts part of the problem and, and I think that even if that still existed today and say I like was being uh, asked to come back to that mm -hmm. part of the problem is, is it's so big that change takes it would is like it takes a lot of time and a lot it's of effort. Yeah. Because like the, 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 the team that we had there had been there. I mean, a lot of the, the team had been there since I was like born. So, <laughs> you know, it's, it's, it's tough to get it's them to change. It's crazy to talk about it that way. Right. It's like, wow, dude, like, it's been there since sixties. Like it's like, well, the parts yeah. business was from 81, but I was born in 86 and a lot of the people started in like the early night, you know, we had a lot of people from like the serious? early nineties. Mm -hmm. I got, the repair shop had been around since I, I think it's like the late sixties, early seventies, but yeah, I am nine years older than you. 
Yes. Really? Yes. Come on. I was born in 77. I, I mean, Come on. It's, I, I usually get along with people that are older than me, but, um, but, but yeah, so it's the curvature to, for, to change would be like, okay, well we need these people to retire at some point so that we can get new people in and start a whole new process and, and grow it. Um, because like there, you know, especially when you're in a, um, the more niche you are, like we were in heavy duty truck parts. So it's yeah. like, it's hard to get people that know enough about heavy duty truck parts. And there's so much to know that it's, it's really hard to like, box somebody into a training session to know ever like no you're bringing up something by. very 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 interesting because like obviously the target audience of this show is normally gen x and millennials right mm -hmm. and i think it's you've been hitting uh, for a few minutes now on this generational shift right mm -hmm. and how co long-standing companies that are successful yes they do hold on to some of their roots and the core but there is shifts and pivots that have to happen, like if not every 10 years, every 20 years, whatever, because there's literally different target audiences, different technology. Like, look, look at, uh, God, I'm going to age myself now, but you already did. It's all right. Because, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, like, literally next month, uh, I'll be 41. So, uh, Woo. Um, time flies. So, do you remember hearing about a company by the name of Lucent Technologies? Yeah, the phone company. Well, it's more IT, but yeah, they but did. Yeah, anyway, okay. they did do they, phones at one point. I well, think they were headquartered here, so where I live in Allentown, Pennsylvania. Okay, and they don't exist anymore. Like they were, they they, and then for example, we have the famous Bethlehem Steel site here, which is the, I think Lucent Technology has morphed and changed over the years, but like their big big footprint here gone. Like each building has been repurposed since then, just like Bethlehem Steel. So Bethlehem Steel was one of the biggest steel manufacturing companies in the world. Like their steel built the Golden Gate Bridge in San Francisco. Their steel is in every major city. Um, the, literally warships from World War I and World War II were made from our steel here in Pennsylvania. Now it's become a music venue, Sands Casino built a casino on the site. Uh, you know, there's live music. We've been, we've been building museums on the site, all kinds of, they've been re like two miles of property along the river was like just non-existent. It was just not, it was, it's now being repurposed, but it took years to get there. So because that company did not retool and readapt between the eighties to 2000, right? That, that 20 year gap, they kept getting being told like, hey, no one's doing big, 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 gigantic steel construction anymore. You might want to consider retooling some of your factory space for smaller construction. They didn't want to listen. Well, they became obsolete. So that company folded. And like, this, is, this was a worldwide powerhouse of a company. So, I mean, are you, are you feeling where I'm going with that thing that the whole – because that's why I think that's what you, you're you coming back into your family's company. It's like, guys, let's 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 get like a mix of experience here to help with that adaptation and metamorphosis process for that growth. Yeah, yeah. I mean, but it's also because we have a smaller team, right? Like we don't have ten locations with like 150 employees. It's it's one location with like 14 employees. So right. it's it's we're able to pivot a lot more, uh, you know, and change the process a lot more and experiment with things a lot more because we can we you know, we don't have this behemoth of like people that are states and states like literally in Florida from New Jersey. You can be more uh, agile. Yeah, and and you can be there to to handhold and like really build out the process. So I mean, that's um like I said, I, I think that from uh, the original question was going back to like, if, if I thought that this, that this was all to like sell the business and, and I don't believe that that's the case. At least okay. I hope that's not the case. Cause yeah. like I'm here now, right? Like I left, I left so, HopeWorks. You're, you're I'm building a legacy. Giving my time in, I'm putting my time into, to help build this up and not, not to sell it, but like, that's why we're either going to expand ourselves and or build out, you know, a franchise network. So it's one or the other, but either way, the process that we have has to be a certain way to be marketable beyond what we're already doing in business. Definitely agree. Definitely agree. Um, well, and, and that's so, what yeah. I'm picking up. And that's why I just was looking for some clarifications there because no, of course, I mean, of course. There, there's people who might be hearing this episode and they're in that entrepreneurial journey or they work with people who are in small businesses and 
I used to compare all the time. Like I used to chase the big company world. You know, that's what I did when I first got my career going. And one thing that I learned very quickly is that the bigger you go, sometimes the slower things move and the harder, yep. the harder it is to shift and pivot as you've just confirmed. Like, Hey man, there's advantages to having a 14 person team with a single location. Right. But if you, if you had 15 people times five sites spread across the country, is it, is it as agile? Possibly not. Now, granted, we have technology now. You could be doing virtual meetings, video meetings, webinars, and stuff like that, but you're still now spreading that um, the management structure and the communication structure across multiple time zones, multiple cities, multiple And locations. the personalities, right? And that's, right. that's the thing. It's like we're used to doing it this way or we're, you know, and that's where it gets tricky because it's not just about a business um, operational efficiency type of, you know, numbers type of game. It's, it's a, how do I get them to buy in, right? Mm -hmm. How do I get the, the, the employees to say, yes, I, you know, I, I got faith that this is that, that we this might not be right out of the gate, but we're going to uh, do reiterations until we get to what we're looking for, which what we're looking for is filling more bays, getting, you know, getting more customers in, being able to service more customers efficiently and and make it more profitable for everybody, both our tax and, and the business as a whole. So you, you guys still have the parts business or no? Is it no, just that was so that was sold um, a year after I left. And, and that's going back to like, so my dad, you know, he had this, this idea and, and I grew up with the same idea that like, this is forever, right? The part, the business, the, the parts business is forever. There's no way we would ever want to sell. We'll listen to the people that want to talk. And, and if they had this crazy number, yeah, like there's, there's the, the door, the window's open for you, right? Yeah. Um, the door might be shut, but the window's open. And, but at the same time, it's like, I think he, after I left, he, he realized like things, things aren't necessarily built forever, right? Things, you know, things change and move and um, adjust. And, and, you know, for me, it's, uh, it took time for me to learn that too, because again, I grew up in it. So like to me, this is, was home. And like, now I have to help in the sale of home. And that's not like, that was like, I was really mad when we were, when they were going through the sales process. I mean, I wasn't fully Honestly, involved. Like, I was waiting for that. But, come up. Like there had to be like, just God, I'm just waiting to hear. It. I want to hear it come out. I'm like, I, uh, I don't have the hard. picture here, but like, I, I, I was on the phone with, with some of the people and I was like doodling very violent type of imagery because I was so <laughs> angry that like, that this was happening. And, and you, I, held, you and, held on to that? Uh, I have a picture of one of the doodles that I did because it actually came out really cool. It's like a flying like spaceship pyramid thing with like an all seeing eye and there's like people underneath and did you ever put like, that into one of your books? out death. No, no, I haven't. Um, my books are very positive and I was just very angry at the time. But, but, but the thing is, is because over time, like, I, well, care. that's, yeah. I mean, that's the, the double edged sword of care. Yeah. <laughs> so I, you know, I, uh, I, I think that, you know, when it comes to business and how you, you want to treat it, I think that you should build it for a legacy, but you should also uh, keep it in mind that other people have to operate it, right? It's, it, you always got to worry about the hit by bus syndrome. Hit have, by have bus have syndrome. Yeah. I yeah. Like so, this. so it's like, okay. everything's going great. As long as Joe doesn't walk outside and get hit by a bus. Cause if Joe gets hit by a bus, like everything is going to fall collapse on itself because Joe is that kingpin. Right. So yeah. my whole thing is, is you can build the, you know, the business for the legacy. You can build it for the family. You can build it for whatever it is, the, the purpose that you want, but build it so that there's the systems and the, the processes in place so that if you do get hit by a bus tomorrow morning, everyone's going to come in and still have a job, you know, because, you're even though you're not there you're in the hospital you're dead there's mm -hmm. still the, like they know what to do everything's documented and there's a, a a process now with that said you still need somebody to be the visionary to like where are we going a year from now five years from now ten years from now and build that you know and help implement those things but but at the same time like you can get another person to do that maybe it's another owner maybe it's another ceo maybe what whatever it ends up being but you don't want to be the thing where it's like, I'm doing all the paperwork. I'm the one that's like pushing all the buttons to make, you know, everything move well, forward. God, Cause if I, if I go on vacation, the buttons won't get pushed. Things won't move forward. Well, that's and that's, that's what we were hinting at earlier, right? Was, mm -hmm. do you have a system in place? Is there a team in place? Like God forbid your dad 
gets injured or gets sick or you, for example, right? Like, okay, it's, this isn't just about your dad and you. A a great company is putting its people first. It's like, hey, are we building something to protect our people? Uh, Because this is their livelihood. This is their paychecks. This is affecting their families. And everything you're hinting at right now is I think very, very important people to realize is that are you building it for yourself or are you building it for something bigger? Because I think a lot of companies, unfortunately, not trying to be selfish, are afraid to relinquish some of the control and afraid to actually build the system. So there is that hit by a bus effect in place. You got to have the power to let power go. And that is tough to, I can't take credit for that line, but I love that line. Uh, And uh, so you you have to have the power to let power go. It's, it's, and it's tough to be able to say that somebody else is going to do, you know, X, Y, and Z and, and be able to make this move forward without me being involved. Um, and it's, you know, when you think about these, uh, any bit, I mean, I, I've consulted for a number of businesses where it's like, yeah, it works when you're small and when you're doing all the things and you're putting in the hours and it's, it's not just about putting in the hours, but it's also knowing about you know, the people that I'm putting in place to do these things after me, are they taking advantage of it? Mm-hmm. Right? Like I know it takes 10 minutes to do one X, Y, Z process. Well, it's taking them like, 60 minutes or 40 minutes. Right. Why is it taking them so long? Is the process broken? Is it because they need more experience? Is it because I haven't taught them well enough? Or are they just taking advantage of the fact that like I, my attention's over here instead of right here? Yeah, I agree. So, so there, and that was something like my great, going back to my grandfather teaching me like when I was little about like, okay, you not, you gotta know every piece of the, you don't have to be the, 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 the absolute expert, but you have to at least have a baseline of what it takes to do everything in your business. So that if, if somebody's sick, you can jump in, you shouldn't have to always jump in, but you could jump in or that you could plug somebody else and teach them and get them up to that baseline at some point, you know, in the, in the quick uh, future, near future. So I, I got to just do it because I think I, you didn't, you never told me, but did I get it right? Uh, yes, that, that is right. Um, ah, video, we, sorry, we, audio, audio <laughs> listeners. I am, I've been trying to track down the trucking company and it's part of fleet solutions is actually the site that I had to find, but I loved it because I actually found your history site technically. So I went to the about page and I love, uh, the, because like this, this site shows family owned since 1981, but this generationally goes back farther. And I love oh, yeah. the history page because like you got that sweet old like early 1900s truck uh, on this page. It's like from the 50s, I think. I don't know. I'm I think not, it's a, I'm like not a truck 50s. guru. I'm, I'm going to go with 40s to 50s. I have no idea. So, but it's cool. So uh, no, it, it it is. Um, it is. And and this site, uh, I, the, like it, you know, I didn't put it together, so I can't no. take. Uh, Take any credit for it, but I that know, I know I know you want to you, you want to overhaul it, don't you? Don't you? We'll yeah. get there, but I I probably won't be the person to do it, right? Like I will probably hire somebody to to do it and make my vision come come true. I might design it and give it to the person to build it, but I'm probably not going to put the hours in the twenty forty hours it takes yeah. to to put it together. Well, like like back to your site, superjoepardo.com. Like, is that an aerial shot of your dad of your family business? That is the uh, the building that we we was the central hub for the part of truck service parts um oh, you, okay. if you actually cool. look yeah. at it you can yeah. see like see it says fleet pride on that truck in the middle um like yeah. i'm using my mouse like you can see my mouse but in the very in the middle that right. white truck right there yeah. yeah so that that's the company that that bought the uh my family's business i can zoom in yeah right. i mean yeah. most people wouldn't know what that you know it is but yeah, yeah that was uh taken with the drone uh last summer i think it was but that's cool because even though you don't have that that section of the company anymore mm-hmm. like dude you guys built that like that's it's still part of your family lineage it right? is and we, we still own the property we still own the building um oh, smart smart yeah Real so they, they ran yeah 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 so, so it's, hold, it's, on a second, hold on your family owns a property owns the building yes and then sold the business system like that's that 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 business um it, i think we sold uh, the assets were sold that's generally okay. how things go because uh there's a there's like um a legal reason for that it has to do with like being sued after the fact um by like oh, that's true because what, like if, that. what if a part failed or a service yeah failed? Okay. it's yeah so but it's, they're, but they're doing what assets. you guys did right mm-hmm. it's yep. still a parts company mm-hmm. yeah but they're a roll up there if you go to fleetpride.com it, they're like i think they do like two billion a year or something like that wow yeah. And on, on a side note, do you guys have a second location? 
Uh, repair shop? Yeah. Uh, not it, currently. We used to in Vineland. In Jer- no, no, we did have a Brenningsville location. Yeah, at that's one point. just north of me. I, I that was a parts know. location, not a, okay. a service shop. But yeah, we did. Uh, it was still coming up in Google. I'm like, what? I was like, you guys got a branch up just well, north of me where where I go mountain biking and skiing in the in the Poconos. So. It's, a, it's a nice area. I I mean, I only went there maybe like you know five, six, seven times or something over the the course of its existence, but. But yeah, no, it's a nice area. It's a nice area up there. I just had to geek out a little bit on that. <laughs> I'm, I'm just loving this because, like, again, this is back to the. I think the core of where we're going in this episode, right? Is like, dude, you, <laughs> you're nine years younger than me. Not that age should matter, right? But you've had such a metamorphosis, and it's just so interesting. Like when you and I were talking in Philly, like I was purposely to stay in quiet and i it's hard for me because i talk way too much. and <laughs> never, never never scott never but i'm hearing um as you're talking about it and i'm listening to your energy and it was like oh dude like this is this is a big move and you're excited i i am excited yeah. i i uh you know i i think going back to like the the whole like sharing the process thing um you know, I, I think I part of me would like to to share more of it than I think that I'm going to actually get be able to for a time constraints and b um, making other people feel comfortable in in what I'm uh, you know working towards. Yeah. Right. So so like one of the, it's like one of those things where it's like these 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 thoughts and expressions do not express the thoughts and feelings of other people. You know, it's just me, right? And um, but. But with that said, like I plan on creating, um, you know, going forward content based around like what I'm actually working on within the business, even if I'm not necessarily vlogging the whole journey and all that stuff. Like that's something that I would, I would love to do. But at the same time, I I was kind of nervous about that part of it because like, I don't want to split my, my mind up between being the producer of something and the like problem solver or something. No, I see and your struggle there. It's tough. Yeah. Um, and and, and if, again, when it comes to like a vlog, for example. It's like, oh, hold on. I need to put the camera up here. Like this is going to be a yeah. great shot for us to have this conversation. Like that that's sounds the way you were, awesome. That's the way you were but... before. Like you were so spontaneous. The spontaneity with your vlog before <laughs> was hilarious. I loved it. But that's, it's, a, it's different. That was more personal. Mm-hmm. This is more like, okay, you can't be in the middle of an important business meeting and be like, oh, dude, hold on a second. Got a selfie video of this bad boy. Like, and people be like, um, can we just finish what we're talking about? Like, <laughs> I see your point. Like, there's a right time and a wrong time. And it should not, again, back to your earlier point, you don't want it to come across like a reality TV. There's already way too much reality TV to begin with. So I'm with you on that. <laughs> it, it is. Plus, you get into the whole navigating, like, who wants to be in it and, and, you get into like, what do we share? What don't we share? And that slows the pro the creating process down. So right. like one of the things I, I was, so I went running this morning and, and one of the things I was thinking about was like, okay, how do I navigate this? Right. How do I build? And this is like totally being real. Like how do I navigate the idea that I don't want to share the, cause I, I don't want it to be a, the, the, the whole thing isn't about the day to day grind of like, okay, this truck came in and what process did we go through and all that. It, it's really about the, the pro, like my thought process of going through like, okay, what am I dealing with now? And how can I relate that to somebody else who's trying to, to figure out, like navigate their way through building a franchise or, or something to that effect or even building a business? Because like it, sure. it's really like the whole franchise thing is just that somebody else is buying into your, your, your brand and your model and your, your, your marketing and, and all that. So, um, and the systems and all that. So I... <laughs> You know, I, it's something that I definitely have wrangled with because, like, again, I don't want to put other people in, in a position where they're uncomfortable. That's not never my intention. Well, especially um, it's, it's the family business, and I don't want to say it's more old school, but from the outside looking, <laughs> I, I think there is a generational difference there. I mean, my dad and my younger brother both drive trucks. Maybe not the big ones that you guys work on, but actually, no, my dad's going back to a big straight truck, actually, probably a 30 footer. Yeah, uh, yeah they, we work on those. Yeah, they've been doing well, that's how my, so my father has been a, a cattle broker his whole life. Like he's never worked for anybody but himself. And his father was a cattle broker and a seller before him. And now my younger brother has split off and has his own version. So they're all over central PA and they go to South Jersey too. But it's, 
yeah, their, their family business has shifted over the years. Like my dad always had the big, big straight trucks just shy of air brake requirement because mm. he never got his yep. CDL. Uh, even though he could have gotten one like for free back in the day and he would have been fine moving forward. Whole different story. But then my brother kept pushing him. He's like, he's like, listen, we need to, we need to change the business model. He's the next generation. Oh my God. Like I could just picture what you and your dad were like because I watched my younger brother and my father, like they were fighting all the time because you got two generational brains and you know my dad like hey he built this from nothing and he did it with, you know from his father and then he built it and now he's trying to he's trying to tell my younger brother like listen i've been there this is what happened this is what went wrong and then you got the younger brother where it's like no i get that but we should still try this and you should consider it and it was just like button heads it was <laughs> <laughs> and every family dinner, every family dinner, I'd come out for the holidays. I'm just like, uh, all right, see you guys in another three months. <laughs> it, I, don't, I don't know if you were that bad, but. No, you know, there was times where it was that bad. And then one of the things about coming back and thinking about like, okay, it's not just about like, you know, money or whatever, but like boundaries was a big thing that I wanted to make sure that we established and we talked about because like we still had some of those issues, right? Like the, the, like just because time has passed and we, we have both grown in different ways doesn't necessarily mean that we're on the same page when it comes to like, I don't really want to talk about this stuff on Saturdays and Sundays. Like yes. we're closed. I'm Boundary. not there. Like yes. Boundary I have my own business and my own clients and my own thing going on as well. So, you know, and when I'm over, I don't, I don't want to talk about it. Like we can talk about it Monday. You know, I'll be there. You'll be there. It's we're, we're both getting paid to be there. Like, l let's talk about it then, right? Unless there's something pressing. I, I, there's always an exception to the rule. But, but you don't want the exception to be the all the time rule, like become the rule. But I'm with you on that because I, I swear to God, I, I love my father. I love my mother. I love my family. But it's like every time I step foot in their house, um, it's interesting because like at some point in the evening, I guarantee you there's always going to be a mention of, how many miles is on my dad's new truck or the other truck? Like, cause he drives so much. He's like, Oh, well did another thousand miles this week or get um, I like that. It's like, you've been telling me this my whole life. Like you got to find something new to talk about, <laughs> but it's, it's, it's his life. I get it. I humor it. But I'm like, but I, to your point, I'm like, tell me something else. Like, did you and mom get out of the house? Did you, go to a, a, I don't know, a, a, an arts fair or something. Like, you know, there was, my dad's so work, 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 work his whole life. Like he, it's again, generational difference. My dad's never been on a plane. Um, when I do my heli skiing wedding in March, like they're not going to that. I, I'm going to have a Pennsylvania after party in June after the, the heli skiing uh, wedding in March next year, because my family's not coming to that. They're not crazy adrenaline junkie fitness guy like I am. So it's, it's just, you just accept it and you just roll with it. I don't know. I'm sure you experienced some of this. Like we are at a different lifestyle and we embrace things differently. And it is important to have the separation and to unplug and have other things to talk about. Right. Yeah. Yes. I, I don't know. Cause I found myself like, I, you know, I don't always have a whole lot to talk unless I'm like with a specific group of like types of people like podcasters or computer people or, you know, e even even in the like, I love computer games, but I don't follow it like some of my friends do. So like, they'll tell me about things I might find it interesting, but like, I don't have that same connection to it that I once did. Or even DJing friends, like I don't DJ out anymore, though I will be DJing at MapCon. Uh, me and are, Harry. Are you, you're breaking out the DJ boards? Yeah, oh. me, Harry, Neil, uh, and and Mary, and, and with, with special guest uh, Dave Jackson on guitar, uh, we really? will be Really? I had Dave jamming. on the show that uh, you're at your MapCon. We had... Actually, do you remember that? Do you remember, was that last year? That was last year. Yeah, last year's yeah. on. I, I set up everything uh, in the bar area on the table. Yep. And then people just kept like diving in. And like you did like a drive-by like shout out. <laughs> and then by the end of the show, like Dave Jackson is, is sitting down. It was the longest show that I've ever done. I think it was two hours. Hall, of, Hall of Famer Dave Jackson. Hall of Famer Dave Jackson. Actually, I think it was called The Dave. I think we were calling the, him the, the Dave. The Dave Jackson. The Dave Jackson. We were, dude, the, ha back, the Hall of Famer Dave Jackson. Well, because uh, what's his name? Um, Independent Nick. So Nick, or, or Dependent yep. Nick. Mm -hmm. So yep. Nick, 
is constantly messages me. He's like, dude, I went back and listened to the show again, laughing my butt off. Like he loves that episode. And it's the most ridiculous show ever because you're at a podcast conference at the end of the conference and you just have mics set up and people just are just, I lost, I think we had six different podcasters <laughs> dropping in on that episode. I kept trying to end the show and then somebody would get up and somebody else would sit down again. I'm like, just, just, just go with it. Just let it roll. Um, actually, you know what? For this episode, when we air this, I am going to link that back into the show notes so people can find that uh, because it is stupid. It's just ridiculous. Um, but to your point, uh, it's, I'm not saying you can't talk about the things we have passion with. I'm just saying that you actually just brought up a great example. I was saying, I want my family to have some other things to experience and talk about. Well, technically that's exactly what you just confirmed. Like you have, you've done DJ stuff. And yeah, like, but like not, no one's like, interested in that unless they're in with no. the group. Well, my point being is, is that, but you have like, things the, to talk about. Were, no, I, I don't. And that's, that's the <laughs> scary part is like, like, what yes, do I have do. to talk about? Like, Okay, I could talk about, okay, how are the kids? Well, they're great, they, you know, blah, 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 blah. But the kids are probably literally like right there sitting next to me. And then it's like, okay, well, I'll talk about work and like the, the, the new book that I'm writing or something like that. And I, I honestly, honestly feel like kind of um, not guilty, but like, I don't know. I don't feel great about it sometimes because of the fact that I feel like, wow, like I have all these things to talk and people have told me like, Joe, you have like all these things going on. You're doing all these things. And like, I, I went to Wawa today and got lunch and, yeah, and but, I went to but, work. But like, right before you sat down today, you were worried about how you would look on camera because you went running <laughs> this morning and here today on, I don't mind dating this August, 18th, the, August yes. 18th, Saturday, 2018. It is humid as hell. I don't know if it's humid in hell, but well, however that works. But anyway. <laughs> I doubt it. There's a lot of fire, apparently. While you That's, were running. Oh, yeah. The whole West is on fire right now. I've yeah. lost track because I follow all that still. But it's, um, I spent three hours this morning cutting up uh, you know, blown down trees from all the excessive rain. So that park, in, in my mountain biking park, is just, it was flooded earlier. That The flooding went down. So I hiked in and we're running chainsaws this morning. So I'm, I came back and I was sweaty as heck. I literally jumped in the shower just to get somewhat presentable to come back, get changed and do the show with you because I'm with you, bro. Like, so granted you went running and I went playing with chainsaws. That's stuff to talk about. It, it's okay. You know? it, it is. But like when I'm running I, it, to me, it's like a, a form of meditation. So like, I am not going to talk like necessarily talk to other people, but I mean, I talked a little bit about what I had in my mind going on today, but, um, but I don't necessarily talk about it. Like, at the dinner table with like the in-laws or my no. parents or whatever. So uh, it's well then. So, back, so let's, let's full circle. I don't back. know. But actually real quick pause. There was a little hack, ladies and gentlemen, uh, when I run versus bike, when I do endurance sports, my brain works differently. It's actually great. So you said it was a meditative for you. That mm -hmm. is totally valid. So there's a, just a quick lifestyle tip. That's why you need to unplug and go do something health and fitness related because it, it helps your brain. It just, anyway, just wanted to pause on that. It absolutely does. Yeah. But let's full circle back then. So my point was like, when you do our get together and have a family dinner. So it sounds like you're similar to my family. It does often transcend back to business speak and work speak. That's what I want to talk about, like pretty much all the time. <laughs> hey, I, I do. I mean, I, like, I, I, I love D, I, I love DJing, though I haven't had the chance to do it in the last two years. I need to start practicing because I got to knock a crap ton of rust off before yeah. we get there at MapCon. Um, I love putting on events, and I love you know MapCon, and I love you know networking with people and going to conferences and stuff like that. Um, running and and um, dis obviously Disney, Disney like yeah, like I rocking have the, rocking a Disney half marathon shirt you know? yeah 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 so I I there's things I enjoy so it's not like I have a lack of of um and you know and gaming and things like that but it's not that I I know I noticed I noticed I was going to say I, something I, earlier I'm rocking my mic drop a shirt from Mapcon so sorry that's all right I uh so it's not that I have a like oh you have you have no hobbies and you know blah 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 but it's more like on my like i don't know my like business is on my mind like pretty much 24 7 and it's been that way for about four four and a half years i mean even before that even before i left like that's one of the reasons i got burned out was because i was so invested in what i was doing in the in the process that i did get burned out and that's one of the reasons that you know i was like okay i need to, it's time for me to find something else to do with okay. my life 
I'm with you on that. Which led me down this awesome path where I got books and, you know, speaking at different places like the United Nations and all that stuff. It's awesome. But, you know, at the same time, like, I don't know. I, I, I don't know. I also don't want to ever feel like I, I'm talking just about myself. So I like to ask people, like, I, I try to, like, throw a bit out and then, like, okay, and then ask, like, well, what are you up to? Because I don't, I don't mind listening. It's one of the things I learned from podcasting. I've learned from people like you and other people, too, is that – it, it it is a metamorphosis and like i i used to felt i used to feel very like narcissistic because i felt like i was always talking about stuff i did because i do a lot of shit like i'm always doing things and people are like dude do you ever slow down i'm like yeah once in a while but i don't have kids so my stories and my experiences are going to be different than you but that's why you mm-hmm. and i get on microphones and catch up because our lifestyles are different but we both have a lot going on and actually I haven't told anybody on the air yet. I've been casually mentioning that I want to get around to writing the book or what a book, right? About the, the, the hype, the hotshot lifestyle shift, what wild and firefighters did and everything else. And it has officially begun. So thank you for inspiring me as a fellow oh, author. So you're very welcome. Yeah, that's awesome. Do. I got, ch- I got chills. Like well, you've launched, that's how awesome. many, you've launched how many books? I mean, four, four, four. <laughs> I, and I have a fifth one. I just haven't, um, you know, time is, is really tough. I mean, look, I, I, going back, you have to table some things, right. And that's, you have to be willing to look at your life and like, put it down on paper and like, these are the things that I do. What, what is not going to happen next? Right. And, yeah. and like, I wanted to do, um, uh, retreats for business owners and entrepreneurs. And you know what? It's been tabled till at least next year at the early, like the end of next year at the earliest. You see, the good thing is this, you have the ideas and you're smart enough to table them. It's got to feel right. It's got to fit. You can't force yep. it. And like, look, I mean, I'm doing screen sharing right now, ladies and gentlemen, you can see all this on YouTube once the episode is up, but it's like, he, he's got, you know, I self empower. He's got dream big. I'm, I'm reading off the books, dream yep. big and win. He's got Joe Pardo's 31 life changing concepts. And then sales won't save your business, even though sales are so detrimental to business success, but that's a great book. I highly, highly recommend it. I recommend them all, but as a sales and marketing professional, that was a great book. So just giving you a Thank shot. you. I, I appreciate that. Well, you're just giving me ideas. Like this is like, I've crushed so many books Consume, consumer wise. Mm-hmm. And then you just keep getting to the point, just like podcasting, right? I was consuming podcasts. I've talked about it on stage at your event. I've consumed podcasts for so long. And then eventually I'm like, wait a minute, I don't know how to shut up. I can talk at a microphone. <laughs> Let's launch a podcast. Um, <laughs> so now it's like, I've consumed so many books. I've read them. I've listened to them. I, people keep telling me that I have a story to share. Okay. Just put up or shut up. It's now the book has to happen. So I'm on a I'm on a 90 day crunch timeline. I'm trying to. Oh, we're gonna see. Uh, this is how I do things. This is how I've done everything. It's just like I, I just gotta see what I can do in the next 90 days. This just I mean, FYI, <laughs> this I literally hired my coach yesterday. So oh, that's awesome. Oh, it's on. It's on. So I mean, I, hey, like I, I, you know, I self empower was 10 days from dr- like literally I had a dream about um word you know words in um repetition art. And, and 10 days later I had a book, I had the book and, and even the first two books, the, the 31 life changing concepts and the, uh, um, the dream bit, you know, how to dream big. Both of those books happened within, uh, less than, I think like around two months or, or not like 90 I, I days. I do remember that I mean, every time you and I have chatted, whether I was on your show or you're on my show, um, no little hack, ladies. That and book took forever. That book took like two years. The, yeah, the sales I won't mean, save your business. And because, that was because I kept tabling it because, uh, uh, you know, of different, like we had a baby and then I got, I started working with the nonprofit and, and then it's just like, I got to get this, I got to get this book out because people, people really need this book. And it's been, it's funny. It, here's the thing. It doesn't sell that well, but it does sell well as sales won't save your dealership. Sales won't save your hair salon. Sales uh-huh. won't save your uh, I have like 20 different versions of the book and those sell without me even promoting them. They sell right on Amazon. Well, because you niche them. Yeah, so. exactly. Exactly. So the sales will save your business. Like it sells, but it doesn't sell nearly as well as those other books that people are finding right there. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. So I, you know, I, I, I think that's awesome that you put yourself on a time crunch. I, I think that uh, you need to make sure that you're, uh, comfortable with what you're, what you're putting together. 
and that you have enough time to do it because the longer the book is, the more time it takes. Like the first three books were very, very short and very um, niche, you know, as far as like built for people who don't like to read books, but like, here's, we're here's these into, awesome we're, things. We're digging into the process right now. I'm literally working on it this weekend because he said, listen, we, the coach is like, listen, like we need to see where you're at. He's like, this may be a multi-book thing. Um, mm. You might have too many. He's like, you literally might have too many stories to share. And he's like, you have to feel good about it. To your point, right? You got to be comfortable with the content. And he's like, I, I've actually held myself back because of your earlier point, like I feel bad. I feel like, oh my God, what if I write a book that's completely about myself? But you've heard me on stage. Uh, part of my mission is the motivation and inspiring people to do shit differently and to take risks, which I've done throughout my life. So it's like, okay, some of this book may be about obviously the things that I've done, like the firefighting and leaving the corporate space. But it's, I realize he's like, no, Scott, he's like, you, you have a story to tell. It's going to come out right. He's like, we'll work on it. Don't worry. Um, it, it'll be okay. <laughs> no. And, and you know, people connect with that kind of stuff. Like that's, you know, when we, uh, when we would read books at the book club, cause honestly, I don't read books. Um, no, you I know, and, and, I and I've gotten that. I, mean, I, well, I don't listen to even audio books, but, but, and, and people tell me like, especially people I used to work with, we're like, how are you an author? And you don't read books. And I was like, I, I read people, I read experiences and, and I, I don't know. I don't, I don't read, but then they read the book and they're like, wow, there's like things in here. I've never read this before. I'm like, well, it's cause I probably wasn't reading the books that you read and then regurgitating them back into, into real life. So, you know, it, it's one of those things that I think as a, as a creator and, and there's nothing wrong for finding your way of doing it. Like, but for me personally, I try to limit the amount of intake I take of intake I take <laughs> um, content I intake mm -hmm. um, from TV to movies to, to well, oh, well obviously can, books. Yeah, you can reach a point of overload. I mean, that, let's be real. Like you have to, that's, that's a great tip. Ladies and gentlemen, more great tips. <laughs> go to like, Yes, you can go to too many conferences, consume too many books, listen to too many podcasts. It is possible. You got to reach a point where you have to take action on some of the stuff you've learned mm -hmm. just to see if it does click and if it does make sense. And so you can start making the mistakes that you're going to learn the most powerful things from. Would you agree with me on that? I, I would agree. And I would also say that if you're going to care, um, you know, consume content, find something else that you're interested in. So like I watch a lot of YouTube video. I do watch a lot more YouTube than I do TV. And most of what I watch is tech related. Cause I love, I love tech, but I don't blog about tech. I don't like talk about tech on my Facebook profiles or, 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 or social media or anything like that. I just enjoy it. But what I, what I enjoy about it is the ability to reach into other industries, other niches and say, Oh, look at what they're doing. I like what they're doing. Cross Nobody volume. else is doing it in my, in my space. Let me do it. And that's where like the vlog came from was like, I, you know, I found Casey Neistat. I was like, wow, this guy, like he, it's not just about what he does, but he like, he, he really like is a, is the real deal. Um, all around. So I'm like, you know what, let me, let me put something together, um, take some of his styling and some other things here and there and put it together in a business related way where it's like, yes, it's, it's 80% personal and 20% business. But if you're there for the business, like that's what you're getting at. Like that's what you're going to get more out, uh, out of it than the personal side. Um, and that's why like, the vlogs got shorter and shorter and shorter as I did them for, I mean, I did like a hundred episodes in a row uh, daily. Um, so it was, it was a lot. And that's why I was like, I got to get them shorter and shorter and, and kind of incorporate my life um, and, and kind of maybe even shift it where it's like, now it's like 80% business and 20% personal. So you're getting a glimpse into what I'm doing or where I'm at, but it's, but it's influencing the business end of it. You so have it to make sense you have to, because people want nowadays more than ever, uh, I've actually, I've gotten high off of being more transparent, right? Like mm. I, I, I literally will talk about anything now on this podcast. I really don't care because it just feels good to be completely open and truthful. And when it comes to purity of brand, there might be people, you don't have to tell them everything about you, but it's like, if you can give a little glimpse into who you are, or where you come from, that's what allows people to connect with you better. Cause you don't need to draw everybody to you. Right. It's like, okay. I want the right people who are drawn to me and on, on that theme. So, uh, tagline on your site, right? Like, 
well, not tagline, but like your, your question is like, do you want to take your business to the next level? So as we bring the show towards a close here, right? So you've, you've dove, in, you've dove back into helping your family crush the family business, take it to the next level, the next generation. Are you still doing the coaching or consulting? Yeah, I okay. actually had okay. a uh, a call with a client. Well, I still have my clients that I work with, um, but I do have uh, I did have a couple of calls the other day uh, with some people that are interested in in working with me, and and even more so now that like I'm less available. Okay, good. <laughs> so I mean, I mean, again, when you go to his site, ladies and gentlemen, superjoepardo.com is the core of his brand, mm-hmm. and again, you can go to work with Joe, and again, you have on here, hey. Do you want to increase your time and energy? Do you want more, you know, more complex solutions? Do you want to increase money? Okay. He just, you learned about on today's show that he's kind of been around the block a little bit. <laughs> so, <laughs> and now literally going full circle. So this is exciting for you, man. I'm loving it. And- I, I appreciate that. It, it's, you know, it wasn't an easy decision. It took like nine, uh, between eight and nine months of convincing um, on my dad's part to get me to the point where I would say, yes, <laughs> I, I, I want to do this. Cause I, I wasn't sure, you know, I was nervous about, you know, we have, we, we didn't have a great history leading up to me leaving, um, or, or towards the end of that, that situation. And, you know, like, if you don't know, it ended in a fist fight. So it, that was my, that was my last day. So like when I, when I left the nonprofit conversely, when I left the nonprofit, like we had a cake and, oh, and, <laughs> and we had a luncheon where they gave me oh, this gotta, book. Let me stop sharing. Here we go. All right. Talk again. So they, they, uh, they gave me this book here on my last, uh, on my, not only on my last day, but we had a luncheon after the fact so that all the staff members could be there. And they gave me this book filled with, you know, writings from people that I, I worked with and, and the youth that wow. I, you know, touched their lives. And, um, it, it means uh, like so much to me because, you know, a year and a half that I spent or almost two years that I spent there really, um, you know, was really spent growing on my part. You know, I, I, I was so appreciative of the fact that I got to learn so much and I got to learn in a way that, um, there was things that I, I'm like, you know, this is the way it should be. This is the way other people or other businesses should be operating. Mm -hmm. I think that's the way I haven't worked there to know, to know. And then I got to see it in a nonprofit where, um, you know, the working with like, uh, you know, youth that have been through trauma and, and having that trauma training and then even learning how to do, um, to dig into people a little bit more as far as like dig deeper and, and the specific kinds of questions and ways to get the answers that I'm looking for to, to be able to really help somebody has helped me with my clients and helped me with myself and having a, a, a quote unquote safety plan as, you know, some Gen Xers and, and older would be like, oh, that's, that's silly. That's dumb. I, you know, why would you need that? But, but the, but the reality is, is, is it, it's actually helped me take what I just called like my reset button of like, oh, I'll just like go do this one thing, which is like, go watch something funny so that I can, you know, reorganize my brain and get my thoughts right to, okay, there's other things I can do. And, and, and realizing that, and even like, um, you know, taking, there's a test called the ACEs test. It's like 10 yeah. questions and, and, and taking that and being like, wow, I got a seven out of 10. That's really not good. That's really <laughs> not good. Um, and, and realizing that about myself and, and putting some of that into perspective and then utilizing that experience to be able to help other, uh, help youth that are go- have gone through way worse than what I've gone through, even regardless of what my ACEs score says. Mm-hmm. So, um, and yeah. So, so like I, but so the conversely, like getting a book with a bunch of nice things, having a cake at the end and, and then having a luncheon, like, you know, five days later, four days later is incredible versus like when I left, it was very unceremonious and not a, nobody, nobody was handling it well. I wasn't handling it well. My family wasn't handling it well. It wasn't a great time. And the only reason I tell people this and, and why I'm so open, I love the fact that you're open about uh, things, Scott, it, is I don't want other people to, to go through what like I have, right? I want them to be able to like identify, but like, Oh snap, like I'm going through this either whether in my family's business or, or even with my boss just in general. Um, and I need to take a step back and, and not let it get to this point. Um, it's, 
it's not always easy to identify, right? Because you're too the whole like you're too close to the situation to see. But, but, but what happened today? But like, go running, you, you know. Like put yourself everything. distant. Give yourself yeah. some distance. Literally, like that's a pun. Give yourself some distance from your problem, <laughs> and you will you will you will really come to see. And it, it any form of meditation to see like what's the perspective that I'm not seeing that because I'm just too close to it. Like what, what else could I be seeing? What, who can I see it through somebody else's eyes? Can I see it through a third, through a fly on the wall's eyes and say, Hey, am I handling this the right way? Do I come off? Like I'm, I'm doing it for the right intentions or whatever it is. Give yourself that space. Um, and, and yeah, so going back to my, going back to the original, going back to my family's business, Mm -hmm. um, it was a process that, that took a lot, a lot of months of convincing. Um, and, and uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm really excited to be there. Like I really, really am. Cause there's a lot of, like, I love processes. I love numbers. I love, you know, working with the team and, and, and building out change and building out this, this, you know, well-oiled machine. And that's where all this comes from. But underlying and, uh, all of that is I'm also hearing that there's going to be some healing along the way. Well, the, the healing has mostly kind of, completed been there kind of um so so like one of the things that helped for anyone who who's curious at at this point if you're listening still listening at this point uh (laughs) is is you know having having a kid uh really helped speed up the process of healing because it put me in a situation where like i had to see my dad like pretty regularly when at times where i didn't really want to um and you know it's and it's sad it pains me to say that right because like you only get one dad and I, I like i get all that and and it, it sucks um because it's not how i want to feel but it's but it's how you do feel and it's how you you react and how you treat that and how you um deal with it that that it means the most right it, it, it that's that's how what's going to make it's not like what happened or or what's going to happen but like how do we deal with it and that's that's the most important part. So having a kid, having Ava was, was really, I think, I think integral to, to kind of putting me in a situation where it's like, we had to see each other more often. And even though like he didn't really understand what I was doing at the, you know, at the time, um, you know, I, I saw all the dots, but like going back to the whole dots thing, like you have to see, like map it out and see like, Oh, all these things are connected. They all make sense. And if one falls off or I table one of them, I still have all these other things I'm doing that can push me forward and push my, uh, what, well, in my case in my brand and my clients and, and my experience and, and everything to, you know, forward and go making that decision to say, okay, I'm going to go back and work with my family. Um, I thought I was going to get a lot of pushback actually from people. I, I do care what people think. And, and even when I took the job at the nonprofit, like I really was scared, like, okay, I have, I have the, the, these friends and this audience and, and all this stuff. And, and, and I'm worried that they're going to look at me and like, oh, well, you did the, you're doing the dreamers podcast, but like, you're going to go work for somebody else. And it's like, the reason had was because I had a kid six months earlier and things really slowed down for me and I needed a way to catch up. Right. And so, so for me, but people were, 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 were fine with that. Like people were like, yeah, no, that this makes a lot of sense. You're making a lot of sense. It all makes sense. <laughs> and now like I, there, there's been very few people that push back and said, yeah, I don't think this is a good idea. Um, there's been a couple of, people that um without you know naming names that are like no i don't think you should do that i think you should just keep doing what you're doing but once i've explained to them the the grander vision of like <clears throat> look i mean my my intention is to use this as you know not only as a as a business that f- for my family but also as to grow my experience to to grow the, my consulting business cuz that's sure. not going like that's not going away so yeah. and using that as a springboard to help more people like okay once we build if we if we do get there on the franchise end of it um i can help other businesses build out that franchise model cuz now i've had the experience of doing it you guys have already done it yeah all exactly all you guys do is now build it into a replicatable platform Exactly. So going, you know, finding those businesses and find those clients that want to want to take their thing to the next level and, and are um, un, unafraid to, you know, give up, you know, um, to have the power to give up power. Yeah. This is huge. I'm loving this. It's great. Me awesome. too. I, I thank, you know, thank you again, Scott, actually, for having actually, me on. I, actually, I had to message you the other day. I think I was traveling and I'm like, dude, Joe and I got to catch up before MapCon. 
we, I was like, this is, this is, this is a pivotal moment that you've been going through. I was like, we got to talk about it. I mean, granted, any of you guys still listening to the show, I do have entrepreneurs who listen to the show. Uh, I hope this helps generate new thoughts, new changes, new ideas. Um, I mean, Joe, you already closed out pretty strong here, but uh, before I do some final sharing on MapCon, I mean, is there anything that you would like to like, close out, like final words, anything high level, or, or you know, other than me promoting the crap out of MapCon because I love it? Um, anything you want to close out with as far as something important? Um, you know, if 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 you are an entrepreneur, and you, you, you I probably are, if you've listened to this part, <laughs> this far into this, um, you know. I, one of the things I always tell people um, that I, I, I knew about it before, but I think, you know, being at the nonprofit really helped put it into a, a more perspective for me was, uh, you know, one of the most important things you do is, is self-care. And when I told somebody that they were like, oh, no, I have health care. I'm good. And I said, no, no, no. Like, you really got to take care of yourself and, and fi- you know, figure out like the reset switches. Right. But but figure out more of them. Right. So you don't you're not just like constantly crutching on one thing that's like. I got it. It ends up being cigarette smoking or it ends up being drinking or it ends up being something that takes like, I got to go to sleep like that. When, like when I was a little, yeah, a little bit younger, like that was the thing. Like if I was having a bad day and you know what, it's time to go to sleep and then I'll just wake up in the morning. And everything's cool. Like I'm just, like smiles all around. I'm happy huh. and, and I'm charged. And, um, and I still do that. Not, I don't have the opportunity to do that as much now, now that we have two kids and it's like, yeah, I'm tired and I'm, I'm, I'm ready to like for the day to be over, but we still got to eat dinner, clean up dinner, get the kids ready for bed, you know, shower fast, blah, blah, blah. And, and, and go through the process. No, I love so, your point. So self-care is a, a necessary component of healthy lifestyle balance. Uh, I just got done doing two shows yesterday focused on the burnout factor. Mm. So yes, self-care. Yeah. And, uh, you know, just, uh, you know, listen to that, that inner voice. Don't let, uh, don't let people get in the way. I mean, look, when I was, um, literally just starting out, there was somebody that told me like, they looked me dead in the eyes across the room and said, you need to quit and go back to work for your dad because this will never, this will never work. You know, the whole book thing, the whole podcast thing. I never yeah. heard of a podcast before. Like, listen to your inner voice it's it it might still hurt like you're still gonna end up on the couch once in a while crying because like (laughs) things aren't going your way but that's okay because you know what even in the boxing ring you still have the the, you know the ding of the bell to to get a a breather and and if that breather includes crying hey that's that's your jam and that's okay man or girl (laughs) or lady like it's it's all right it's all right just stick in there and and hang in there because you don't know how close you are to, to somebody reaching out and making, you know, something, saying something that really matters to you. Um, and that, you know, that next client that's going to come along that wants to, to be a part or whatever it is that you're doing, you're, you're always just like right there, just keep a positive attitude. And part of, part of that is taking care of yourself. I'm loving that. Listen, hang tight. I want to give you a proper goodbye off the air. Ladies and gentlemen, some final screen sharing for the video feed, but remember, I've already plugged it. We're going to be linking everything in the show. So we always do. So again, a reminder, superjoepardo.com. Okay. Then make sure you subscribe and check out his, uh, the latest edition. Uh, he's, he's already shifted a while ago, but it's an award-winning podcast, people. It is The Business Podcast, 18 months to franchise. Obviously, go to subscribe, check it out, bounce around. You're definitely going to find a few episodes that definitely click home, whether you're did, a business you- professional or not. Did you see that newest episode with my daughter? No. That's scroll scroll, my, scroll down real quick. It's queued up in my uh, – oh, yeah, what? I saw this preview. So the, No, that's the whole thing. Like, so, so the whole video is, is there. Oh, but the it's, whole thing on there. It's hilarious. Yeah, so we shot the whole thing, and then I turned it into a podcast episode after the fact. But either you watch it or, or listen to it, it's, it's hilarious. I will definitely have to watch some of that because she's cute. So. <laughs> oh, thank you. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. We, got, we even got video podcasts of the latest with his daughter. And then a reminder – in the coming weeks, because this I will make sure this airs before it goes out. September seventh and eighth is MapCon, the Middle Atlantic po- Middle Atlantic po- Podcast Conference. <laughs> <has> a- <laughs> a- a- Map dash con dot com will automatically reroute you to podcastmidatlantic.com. So if you want to make it easy, map dash con dot com. Even if you're not a podcaster, come hang out, see different people from different walks of life, different messages are sharing. 
people literally talking about disease, business, uh, things they've, su they've suffered through, they've survived to. You never know what kind of story you're going to hear next. It's a great conference. And a reminder, I'll be back speaking this year. So you will be seeing me and hearing me on stage or however we're setting up the venue on Saturday. So make sure you at least come out that day too. So uh, yes, but, they absolutely should. There we go. So ladies and gentlemen, again, map-con.com. Thanks for tuning in to another powerful Live the Fuel podcast show. As a reminder, um, I think we're definitely fueling your health, business, and lifestyle. But today, definitely a heavy focus on business and lifestyle because let's be real, guys. As Joe closed out the show, it really is about self-care. Even if you're not an entrepreneur, focus on that. Take care of that. It will help you throughout the rest of your life. Thanks for tuning in to another powerful Live the Fuel show. And again, we're here to fuel your health your business, your lifestyle, and you too can live the fuel. We'll talk to you guys again soon. All right, sir. Podcast is clear. Are they, are they not able to see us when you screen share? Uh, we'll be in like little boxes. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Cause I pointed at, at you. Yeah, like you, you did. When you, I saw when you speak. Yeah, I okay. think it goes there. I'm still, I got to reach out to the zoom people. I still keep the video going for fun. I'm going to reach out to the zoom people because I only get the cool grid view when I have more than two people, like more than me and you. And I'm like, guys, what can I do to hack the system so I can always have Joe and me side by side? And put like, this, yeah, well, even like if, the screen if, share if I'm in not the screen sharing, even if I'm not yep. screen sharing, I, I, just when you and I are talking, mm -hmm. I want that to come through on YouTube because it's still doing the, the microphone dominant thing where it's only showing you when you're talking and then me when I'm talking. I want to get a nice side by side for future episodes. Mm, but again, yeah, I got to get on with tech support and work with that so anyway <laughs> i've got literally another podcast now so oh shit okay well you you do that um i'd love the video by the way of you like cutting down it was like a week a week or two ago that you did like you you were doing the cutting of the, the time lapse um, yeah that was really cool there's another one going up from this morning I oh, had awesome three, i had three trees spaghetti together with dangerous vines it was a it was god awful it was the, one of the hardest cutting sessions i've ever done it actually pinched my chainsaw then my other volunteer to go get his chainsaw so I can cut myself out cut my other saw out of that tree because the, the inside of the whole tree was rotted from the inside out so the whole oh, thing wow. co collapsed in on itself it was so dangerous it was one of the hardest cutting sessions I've done to date so love a challenge <laughs> yeah yeah no that definitely is that definitely is a challenge man yeah. so hey you do you do the dad and kid thing that freaks me <laughs> out I'll go play with trees and chainsaws. It, it's <laughs> dad, you know, I, I, I think I'll take the dad and, and dad and kid thing. I'll take collapsing trees on chainsaws any day. <laughs> Uh, All right, I, I gotta, I'll get you switched over on the calendar too. I just haven't had time yet to, uh, to make that happen. Yeah, I gotta figure out how I'm gonna... yeah, No, I, I appreciate it. Like I said, I forgot. I knew that there was something special that you were saying, but yeah. I could, I got the dates mixed up. So, All right, so. I'll, uh, I'll get it fixed, uh, either to probably tonight or tomorrow for probably first thing in the morning when I wake up at like five or four. All right. So, okay. all right. All right, man. Enjoy have a great day. Have a great podcast. Let all me know. Right. Obviously, let me know when this goes live. I'll share it out and all that stuff. And Always I look do. forward to seeing you in a couple of weeks. All right, man. Take it Thank easy. Thank you again. All right, bye. Bye.